So in the same way that the fact that Durant, Curry, and LeBron, and Anthony Davis, and all those stars could be in the play-in tournament, uh, in the West being Adam Silver's fever dream, I guess the nightmare is the way most of us learn that uh, Michael Porter Jr. has a brother in the league this week, to be very honest. Um, so what is going on with John Tay Porter? What happened and what what is happening? Well, the right NBA, now? yeah, the NBA is investigating what happened. So to sum it up, what happened is there were some unusual betting being done on John Tay Porter prop bets, specifically two games, one in January and one just this past week where there was an unusual amount of betting on John Tay Porter's under numbers, under points, under rebounds, under three-pointers made. In both those games, Jonte Porter played but left the game early. In the January game, it was because of an alleged eye injury. In the March game, it was because of an illness. That immediately set up red flags uh, from both the gambling companies and within the NBA, which spends a lot of money to track this type of stuff. So the NBA is currently investigating that. Let me couch this by saying... If it's true, right? We don't know if it's true yet. If this is all just an allegation right now. But if it's true, this is an existential threat to the NBA. This is the biggest threat to the integrity of the game since the Tim Donaghy scandal of 2007. Because you have a player who is allegedly manipulating the outcome of the game. Manipulating what is happening during the game. Now you can sit back and say, well, it's Jonte Porter. He plays 15 minutes a game. These things happen in the first half. What's the big deal? It doesn't matter. If you are intentionally manipulating how anything to do with the game, that is a threat to the NBA because first it's Jonte Porter, maybe down the line, it could be somewhere else. So how the NBA handles this is going to be closely monitored because this is a enormous threat to the integrity of the game. Well, exactly, uh, because of perception as well. I mean, the NBA already has, because of Tim Donaghy, a major perception problem. And I think some of the players are are either playing into that to try and get the goat of some of the officials, right? What the, what the, the money sign was bit, given yeah. from... And then that's the NBA hate. That's why Rudy Gobert got slapped. The NBA considered suspending Rudy Gobert for that. Um, and they hit him with the biggest fine they could possibly hit him with. I think it was hundred grand. For that so the nba is very cognizant and very aware of of how that is perceived by the public that's why with jonte porter if any of this is true he's done he like done, i think like i never think, see him again i think he will be banned from the nba for life and even if he wasn't rich i've talked to a lot of nba executives and coaches about this in yes. the last 48 hours nobody's touching him like how if it if it's true how do you bring a guy like that into the locker room? How do you bring a guy that you're all, you might always be looking at funny if he goes one for six? Or if you put him in the game, in an end-of-game situation, are you going to be 100% certain that he's playing with the right intentions? It's, it, I think it's, if any of this is true, it's going to be impossible for Jonte Porter to ever play in the NBA again. And I'm sure the NBA has the same setup as the NFL, which is they're monitoring, they, they speak to these... Um, I guess gambling sites all the time. They they monitor IP addresses. They they get the information from them, and you know, and it's it's kind of it's kind of wild. You're already seeing today, I believe, the the president of the NCAA, Charlie yep. Baker, says he wants to remove prop betting from college sports entirely because I mean, if an NBA player is deciding I can make some extra scratch doing this, or maybe more than what is salary is that's why i'm trying to even wonder what the I don't even finances know. His salary would be. john Tay porter's salary is four hundred fifteen thousand. a two-way player so it's not a, a super highly paid player though right. i think people listening would say four hundred fifteen thousand is pretty good money to play professional basketball right um the, the, the nba will tell you that their system worked right like they they monitor this stuff two games they figured it out and now they're investigating what happened and so the nba will tell you that the safeguards they have in place worked for a situation like this. But nobody knows if this is the only guy doing this stuff. Now, the questions the NBA are asking right now, are asking the Toronto Raptors specifically, are it's really just one question. Like, did Jonte Porter ask out of those games, or did the team pull him out of those games? Because 
you know, if the team pulled him, that's one thing. If Jonte Porter says, my eye is still injured, I can't play anymore, or I'm sick and I can't play anymore, that's a pretty damning uh, indictment of, of what happened there. So I, we're going to learn a lot more in the next couple of games, but that's the question, or among the question the NBA is asking right now, how is it that Jonte Porter came out of these games before his numbers could even approach the the overs on these prop bets. Yeah, and the two reasons why he got he left those games, you can't have an MRI take a look at it. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, my eye's bothering me. I'm feeling sick. And Back those... injury would be another one. Little things that you can't right. can't do. But the thing, you know, th- this is Adam Silver, as you know, Rich, embraced sports gambling before anybody did. In 2014, he wrote an op-ed for the New York Times saying we need to open the doors, legalize and regulate sports gambling he was at the forefront of all this when it comes to the four major sports and it's paid off exponentially for the nba i think they're going to rake in something like 167 million dollars this year in gambling revenue alone Mm -hmm. this is the downside and we saw a little bit of trickle of it earlier this month when you had tyrese halliburton say people looking at me as a prop bet not as a player you had jb bickerstaff yeah what a quote this was saying that he is getting phone calls from angry gamblers who are upset over whatever happened during game. Now you have, allegedly, a player who has manipulated the game to win prop bets. This is, you saw the upside. The upside, the NBA's experience. You got FanDuel slapped on every broadcast. Every team regionally has a local gambling company that they work with in the stadium people in the, stadium. In the arena people are, are are betting you know in in arenas yeah i mean look if you can do it in any legal state you can do it in an arena pick up your phone and i'll be honest i do it like not not so much in basketball but like say hockey for example yes. i don't know anything about hockey right like but i like going to <laughs> hockey games because they're a lot of fun sure if i have an opportunity in massachusetts to throw like 20 bucks on the Bruins outscoring the Capitals in the third period. Yeah. It's going to make my... Third period viewing? It's going to make it more fun. I, I, I get that part of it. But the NBA's got to figure out how to handle this better moving forward because they have fully embraced the sports gambling world, and this is the downside of it, where you have Halliburton, Bickerstaff, and now the Porter situation, which nobody I talked to in the NBA... Uh, amongst teams believes is the end of it like this is not something that all right we, we did it happened it's over this could just be the tip of the iceberg for the nba well i mean it's not just the nba too it's the sure. nfl i mean major league baseball right now is wondering what Shohei otani was was up to or what his interpreter was it's up it's crazy to. how this all is happening in a one month period right and 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 i'm sure you're 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 seeing the conversation on on you know their network on the DraftKings set you know what I mean? Like everybody's in business with everybody. The same thing with the NFL. I mean, we we have, you know, the NFL has I think three different uh, official gambling partners, and 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 so player and they, and they the NFL relaxed the rules a little bit on what players are allowed to do on that front mm-hmm. in the last couple of well that um, should change. Months. Like I know I, I was reading the Otani stuff. Like apparently players in baseball can bet on other sports. I don't think they can do that in the NBA. I don't think you can bet. I don't know for sure, but I don't think you right. can bet on everything or anything really in the NBA. But this Porter situation, I mean, I use the phrase existential threat because that's what it is. It, it's They're almost fortunate that it happened to a player the level of Jonte Porter because I believe, and again, this is just conjecture, but I believe they're going to make an example out of him. I believe that if this turns out to be true, they are going to come down on him mm. with the harshest possible punishment and hold him up as an example to say, look, if you do anything like this, this is what happens. The basketball death penalty happens. So if you do it, it better be worth it because if we catch you, you're done. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.